Um, good morning, Juan. Good morning. Uh, we, we're going to continue uh, from where we left. Uh, so I'll just uh, share my screen. Um, do you see my screen now? Yes, this is very strange. Oh, tell me about that. Uh, here we go. Um, okay, so we are trying to build a binary classifier, a classifier that uh, gets an image of a, a cat or a dog and can distinguish whether it's a cat or a dog, right? So binary means there are two possibilities. Exactly. We could have uh, uh, start with uh, multiple categories. No, 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 like, that's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you like it. You like a, a, I like cats and I like simplicity. So yeah, simplicity is great. You don't like simplification, right? Also that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Our so time. we are trying to construct this uh, of to find. We're trying to program. By the way, do you want to to see me programming it? Is it interesting for you or you don't like programming? Right now? No, not, not right now. The next time. Next time. Yeah. Are you interested next in programming or not at all? What was that? Next time we discuss this. Okay, fine. So this is our X, right? And our Y is dog or cat, right? Very important. By the Your way. Dog. Yeah. Your dog is a vector, two-dimensional vector. Exactly. One, zero. So yeah. So my my uh, picture belongs to R n because I'm flattening this uh, picture to a flattened vector of very very high dimension, and it's a couple of millions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, something like that. I want to stretch it out. That we're working in a so big, big numbers are getting smaller and smaller with, uh, every year, right? Because the computer can handle larger and larger numbers. Okay. Numbers of the resolution are getting bigger and bigger. Of yes, of, the no, of course. But for the uh, the computer, it's. Doable again. It's ah, doable. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like a piece, piece of example, yeah. This is piece of cake. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, as you recall, uh, the labeling dog or cat, we could have just uh, chosen uh, zero or one, but we are uh, we presented it as a. Uh, uh, Two dimensions. You, you, you told me that. This is the right notation for what we are dealing with. It's a simplex, which is part of R2, right? This is the simplex of uh, dimension one. It's like all the probability with binary probabilities. Yeah, all vectors of two dimensions whose sum is one, sum of coordinates is one. Yeah, and a negative you should have added. No negative. This one, okay. Yeah. So okay. zero point eight, zero point two is good. Zero point six, zero point four. Is For good. example, this can be an output of f, right? And then you say, well, it's a kind of a dog, a chihuahua, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. No, it, it's it's not a chihuahua. <laughs> it's with probability zero it, point it eight. It's a a, it's a dog, but I'm not certain it's a dog. It, I'm 80% certain it, it's a dog, okay. but not a chihuahua. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, that's our goal, right? We, we want to find such an S, a good one. No, and, let's, uh, let's stress, you want to find W. W is a two by N matrix. Uh, you you keep on jumping ahead. You keep on proving. No, it's not that jumping ahead. Teachers when you say it, when you tell me it's a, you're looking for f. It's vague for me. 
when you're telling me I want W, I understand what you're looking for. One, okay. one, we're looking for F, which is determined by W, and I will just say it. But okay. you you are performing the the phrase that teachers are the worst uh, students. Who because teachers are the worst students. No, 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 no. I'm trying, I'm guessing what is not clear to the listener. And when okay. you tell me that it's the function F that you're looking for. So, so you you're a good then student. I, you tell me this is the W that you are looking for. Yeah. Okay. Know. Okay. Let, let's let's uh, talk about it. You're right. So <laughs> it, the candidate we are looking is not just any function. We are choosing it from a family of functions, right? Mm -hmm. And the family is as follows. I I, uh, I stress that uh, x is a vector of very high dimension, mm -hmm. and the family of function is as follows: softmax, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And computers. Okay. Um, soft. Oh, it's morning and I'm already confused. Soft max. You remember what's a function? Yes, yes. And you'd better remind the student what soft max is. Not so yeah, I just yeah. wanted to see if you remember. I remember. Uh, okay, that, that, and the. Uh, so this is a linear transformation, right? A, a matrix uh, that multiply a vector and W is a matrix that look like that. It's a two by N matrix, right? Mm -hmm. W one, one, W two, one, W uh, one N, right? Mm -hmm. W, to n. Mm -hmm. How many uh, little w's like that we have? Many of them, right? Like uh, two millions, or if n is more than a million, two times n, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and those w's serve in the same role that a and b from the parabola example uh, used to act, right? Yes. Okay, so we're looking for good values of those W, which will determine a certain function that we hope will be a, a good fit for our uh, data, right? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, let, let's remind what the data is. Uh, we have, a, we call it a cloud of points. Now, this is a schematic, uh, schematic uh, drawing because you see that each <laughs> x axis actually stands for million axis, and y mm -hmm. axis is actually stands for two axes. So I cannot really draw it in the right dimension, but I can make a schematic uh, drawing like that, right? Mm -hmm. And I, this is x, well, x1, y1, right? Oh, so this is the first uh, data that I have, the first sample. This is the second sample here. Many, many such sample, and this is the last sample. I will denote it as x capital N y capital n okay mm -hmm. don't be confused with the capital n which is the number of samples and a lower case n which is the dimensions of x mm -hmm. of the of the image okay and what we are looking for is the fitting function right like something like that some kind of fw some kind of function which will be determined by the peak of uh, oh 
I'm running out of my battery in my uh, camera, so I just uh, charge it. Just, just a minute. Okay, no problem. Did you manage to, to know if it's a dog or a cat? One minute, uh, I, I lost two here. This one. You didn't ah, see. You have a dog there, okay. Yeah. Who knows it's a dog? It's a dog like those Avishai Ben Chaim. It's a fixed dog sample will not of the wear of his dog dogness. What? Avishai Ben Chaim would say that he is a dog that is not aware of his dogness. Avishai Ben Chaim said a dog is. No, this dog, this particular dog, is not aware of his dogness, his being a dog. That was too complicated for me. Uh, because especially you're when I'm doing something with... else. Yeah, I, I'm really but bad at me. Things at the same time. Uh, okay, just a minute. Oh, this is so challenging. Uh, next time I will learn to charge it. Uh, ah, but actually, you don't need to see me right now, right? You you only I see don't have to see you. I but you do want to see, I'm always happy to see you. <laughs> I, I didn't expect such a compliment. Uh, oh. You won't believe what I'm going through right now. Okay, I think I made it. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Um, uh, so we have a, a data set, those, this cloud of points. We have a family of uh, parametric functions. What do we miss, Ron? What else do we need to define? I don't know. What, what do you mean? The distance no. between the distance yeah, between. Exactly. A distance between a candidate and the, the data set, right? Yeah. How much it misses each exactly. day. Exactly. Exactly. So loss, uh, I put C here because we have a cloud of a data set which is context, and we define it as follow. Uh, an average, uh, this is big N, right? Big N, uh, mm -hmm. capital. An average over all the samples in the cloud in the data set, which is, this is I. And here we put, Cross entropy, which is a measure from information theory, which we need to talk about. Uh, this is YI, this is the labeling of sample I. And here I'm going to take my FW. So each W defines a function. This is FW. And I will give this function the vector, right? X vector, uh, I, right? Is this a proper definition of a loss function? One minute, slower. It's very complicated for me. Yeah, yeah, thank so you. So you, you are averaging over all exam all samples. Exactly. For each sample, that's the easy part. Because now you want to, for each sample, you want some distance function, which you call entropy for some mysterious reason. And the distance is between a two-dimensional vector, FW, XI is a two-dimensional vector, right? And yeah, YI, I, which I, is, is let, let's one. understand what you just said. So this is yeah. this belongs to R2, right? Yes. YI belongs to R2, and so does FW. And now you want some distance function or some function expressing the distance 
uh, between two the two dimensional vectors. Yeah, we mm -hmm. between two probabilities actually, right? Uh, okay. Two dimensional it's vectors important. that are proper, two dimensional vectors that are probability vectors. Yes, that's important because this is uh, yeah, information theory gives me this kind of uh, yes. Entropy is a function of uh, probability vector. Exactly. Not a entropy function of any of vector. That's important to stress. And the uh, cross entropy is a function of two probabilities. Yes. Expressing. But let me let yes. me talk about that. Uh, in, this is called cross entropy. It's another measure from information theory. And I want to talk about this. Uh, Could you explain to me why? So I understand that there is this cross entropy, which is measures the distance between two probability vectors. But I could also just uh, do Euclidean distance. Right, you could have uh, chosen L2, like L2 Euclidean uh, metric. Like uh, yes, the, the question is, what is a good uh, distance measure for you? And it turns out this is a much better one, but you could sometimes. In what sense is it better? I will believe you that it be, it's better, but uh, you have to explain to me yes. in what way is it better. Yeah, that, that's a, a marvelous question. Uh, we, we want the output of our function to have a semantic of probability. Mm -hmm. We want it to reflect some kind of confidence level. Mm -hmm. And we want a, a notion of distance between probabilities, right. which has the semantic of probabilities. Yes. And this is what information theory is good at. Uh -huh. okay. L2 so you're saying just, that you're saying that Euclidean measure between two probability vectors is not a big yeah, deal. And just, it doesn't it really express the exactly it express something it it's ex it expresses something else, but not the semantic I want. That is not related to there being probability vectors. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. It, it forgets the linear, the Euclidean distance forgets completely that there they are probability yeah. vectors. And you don't want it, to for it, it forget it, they live on a simplex. It just yes. on the space. Yeah, right. So uh, let's talk about this cross entropy. Before I talk about this cross entropy, I want to talk about another a measure of uh, uh, information theory, which is called a DQL or Kullback Lib. Wow, I always forget. Just a Kullback minute. Leibler. What's the name of the other guy? Leibler. Kullback oh, Leibler. Cool, cool, that the first one is Kullback, and the second one. Were the Germans or what? I suppose, yeah. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a very, very popular distance measure between probabilities, but I must stress that it's not a metric. It's only okay. satisfies one of three demands that metrics must uh, uh, mm -hmm. satisfy. So, which one do you know? But if they're identical, then the, it's zero, right? Exactly. Two so I will say. Then the yeah. there, exactly. Distance okay. zero. Okay, DQL, exactly. DQL gets two probabilities. It's always uh, not negative. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, equals to zero if and only if they are identical, mm -hmm. which is one. Uh, demand for metrics, but it doesn't satisfy the other two. Who cares for uh, triangle inequality? That's, Who cares for it? That's for CC, triangle inequality. <laughs> uh, okay. That's funny what you just said. Uh, if and only if P1 is... We're, we're dealing with uh, discrete probability, right? Not, not continuous. There is a variant for continuous one, but now we're dealing with discrete. No, I don't understand what is continuous probability and what is- I mean, each, uh, when I write P1, I mean a vector 
in a simplex, not a continuous. Uh, not continuous. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I will stress that not uh, symmetric. Yes. No. Uh, triangular inequality. inequality yes. Okay, but still it is very a uh, popular measure of distance between probabilities. And I will uh, say what the definition of DKL is. DKL of two probabilities uh, is the expectation according to P1 of log P1 over P2. I, I will uh, decompose it. So I should run on all the values I, and I will, the, the the expectation is according to P one I multiplied by log. Uh, by the way, the log is in base two because we are talking in bits. It's not really important. Uh, pardon? Yes. So far, you've written the entropy of P one. Uh, not not exactly. Just a minute. Minus. Yeah, but okay. And then minus. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is the definition. Let, let's decompose it into two. So I can write it. It's equal to what you just said, right? It's uh, over I. This is minus the entropy P1. I. We talked about the entropy in a previous uh, discussion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, log P1 I. This is minus the entropy of P1, right? Yes. Okay, minus, because mm -hmm. the log of uh, uh, fraction is the, the minus of the logs. Uh, Also, we used here uh, the distribution rule, right? Yes, okay. Uh, P1 I log of P2 I. I, which is equal, like you just said, this is minus the entropy of P1, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is plus, this is a cross entropy. This is the definition of cross entropy. Mm -hmm. So this is, it, it is uh, deno denoted as, as such, as, as follows. Uh, P1, because it's, let, let's talk about uh, an intuition of what this uh, means. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any intuition? I, I don't use intuition. I try to look at extreme cases when the PIs are the same. Okay, when, extreme when cases is a good start, yeah. Okay, so start with extreme cases. What so do you see? One is that P1 equals P2, and of course you get zero, which is what we really want. You're talking about a, this a determined a probability, like hot vector, like one zero? No, no, no. If P1, ah. if the, ah, if the, equal, the distribution P1 and the distribution P2 are the same, if they are it's, equal, then it's A minus A is zero. It's zero. Yeah, yeah. If it's the same probability, it's zero. Yeah. Which is good. That's one yeah, of yeah, the yeah. good. I, I promised, I already promised this uh, to be yes. true, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, what's the other possibility? Suppose that. P, uh, that P1 
is uh, concentrated on one, on the first coordinate, and P2 is concentrated on the second coordinate. That's another extreme case. They're very far apart. P2, P2. Yes. So uh, uh, let me just draw what you said. This is P1, for example, right? And P2, I, I take Binawi example. And P1 is the opposite. P2 right? is opposite, yes. What will happen? That's a very good question. At first, so what is this? This will the entropy be entropy of the concentrated thing is zero, right? Exactly. This is zero. Yes, because uh, the only why is it zero? The only pi that it's one, you take log of one, log of one is zero, which is so you, you get zero. Okay. HP1 of P2, well, that's more complicated. Uh, it one is, will be zero, one of those is zero, right? And one of them is one log of zero, right? Log of zero, which is terrible. Minus infinity, right? Minus infinity, yes. So it's going to be plus infinity. Oh, exactly. Then they're very, 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 far. very far apart. Very, very far. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Are you done with the extreme cases? Uh, yes, well, I think. Now I want to talk I'm about. It's a good general. measure. Okay. It, yeah, it's a good start, but I want to to give the intuition of the general case. Okay. Yes. Uh, remember, we talked about an intuition of what probability uh, of what entropy means as the expected number of questions, or we talked about Hoffman codes. Let's yes, talk a little. Actually, we didn't talk about Hoffman code in, the, in those lectures we recorded. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about Hoffman codes, OK? OK. It's important. It's a very, very nice intuition for entropies. Uh, I guess it's Hoffman like that, right? Yeah, right with you. Uh, double N, I don't know. We can no. check it. Uh, suppose you want to send me a letter in English, but you have only bits, like zero and one, and you want to uh, have a code for each English letter. So you want to say, hello, Ori, or something like that, but you don't have uh, letters, you have only bits, like zero and one. And you want to decide what will be a good code to for H, for example, you want the code one, zero, zero. I don't know. For E, you want maybe one, one. You, you want to, to, to find a good code for hello, Ori, or for English, not hello, mm -hmm. Ori. Mm -hmm. What would be a good code? Uh, what should you be um, considering? Frequent letters, one exactly. short. Yes. Yeah, short yeah. exactly. You so get one, it's very nice. It's, it's yeah, uh, because it's not in half of you the case. Quick, yeah, frequent is short, right? That's what you said. Right. Yes, why, why is it such a good idea to have short things for frequent and long one for unfrequent? And short in your letters. Yeah, the expectation, the expected uh, length of your message, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so here is an optimal way for constructing such a code. I will show you. Um, let's uh, write here all the alphabet, A, B, C, until Z, uh, X, Y. Now, suppose you know, it's very easy to find an approximation for the frequency. I can uh, read Wikipedia and start counting and uh, divide by the number of letters that I've read. And you will find out that for it, example, E is very frequent, right? Mm -hmm. It should be much bigger than one over 26, right? right. Let's say right. it's one over 10, okay? Okay. What about X? X should be kind of rare, right? One over 100, no more. Yeah, you think so? Okay. I'm sure it's less. Okay, which is the, the second, 
where was the uh, letter? Z probably. Z probably. Okay, let's say it's one over twenty-two, uh, ninety-two. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. Now the algorithm of Hoffman code is as follows: You take the most rare letters, okay, mm -hmm. and you start constructing a tree bottom up. So uh, X or Z, what what will be the 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 expect uh, the frequency of either X and Z? It will be the sum of the frequencies, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I don't I won't calculate it because I need to know to have the common divider. I don't want to do it, but I can write something like that, right? This is the expectation of this node. Another expectation, sorry, frequency frequency. Now I I continue this algorithm again. I, I will ask which are the two rarest uh, uh, letters, but instead of X and Y, I have a new letter, this one, okay? And maybe, I, I don't know, which is another where, Y is also where? No. <laughs> yes, Y is quite But uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, uh, maybe H, I don't know. So if H was uh, also where, I could have do something like that, right? Uh -huh. And here I will have the sum of the frequency of H and the frequency of this node. You understand what I did? Mm, yes, yes. I oh, great. Okay, so in the end, I will have a, you know, the notion of a full tree, full okay. binary tree. Okay. A full binary tree is something like that. It's it's always have a degree of either zero or two, never one. Mm -hmm. You understand why I have this degree? Yes, that's what it okay. is. Yeah, that's the way I constructed it, exactly. So this is an example of a, a full tree. And mm -hmm. uh, what will be the leaves of the tree that I'm constructing? Letters, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, wh what letter will be here, like really close to the root? A very frequent one, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, maybe here, like very well one will be the X, right? So uh, I will denote each uh, branch with zero and one like that. Left is zero, right is one. Left is zero, right is one. Left is zero, right is one left is zero, right is one, and E, E coding will be zero. X coding will be the branch, let's see, one, one, zero, zero. You understand? Yes, yes. Okay, one, one, zero, zero. This is called a prefix uh, encoding. Mm -hmm. You but forgot something it, very important in your pardon? messages. It's yeah. About something important. In your messages, you need also space. Actually, it's very frequent the space between words. Ah, it, Otherwise, space you, when you send it, you get a one string that you don't know how to put in. in yeah, uh, uh, right. So there is a space, uh, and but what yeah, about punctuations? What about punctuations? Oh, okay. Yeah, you can manage without them, <laughs> but not without space. So, all, my, okay. all my daughters manage without them. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this, it, there is a proof, not a very complicated proof, that this code is the optimal one. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, in expectation. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, you know, I could have done much better if I didn't uh, encode a single letter, but two letters, for example, mm -hmm. because you understand why? Like if I will have a code for AA and AB, like uh, 26 by 26 mm -hmm. pairs, mm -hmm. and I will choose a Hoffman code for the pair, it will be a much, much better one. You understand why? 
no, no, I mean, it will be, you can say because the, yes. the frequency will tell something about the language. You, you see, like, think about five letters, for example. In five letters, you're going to start seeing words in English, which are frequent. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I understand. Okay. You understand? Yes. So Hoffman code is is optimal for a single and for primitive. A... Yes. Yeah. Because you don't mind frequency words. Okay. Do you know uh, two colleagues of you from the Technion called Jakob Ziv and Abraham Lempel, which died? Yes, recently? yes. I know they became famous for such a thing. What did they do precisely? They do something marvelous. They constructed a completely different code, not Hoffman code, mm -hmm. which is, um, it's really smart. Uh, I, I don't want to get into it, but you know, every, almost all the, the communication in the internet, which is then, which is compressed, is using their algorithm. They could have been millionaires if they had patented it, but they didn't patent it. They just gave it away. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a really nice algorithm and the, both Hoffman code and the algorithm is actually uh, converging to the entropy. Entropy is the most efficient way you can compress. So you can talk about the entropy of the English language. So the algorithm is uh, converged to the entropy of the English language. And this is also, if you take uh, big enough uh, chunks. I you don't understand? quite understand what you mean by the, the, the algorithm converts to the Yes, I, 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 did, I didn't uh, define what I said. The thing is that suppose you take a very big uh, chunks of uh, letters, like hundreds, okay? Mm -hmm. And you build a huge Hoffman code, right? It's a huge one. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in hundred letters, you will have a uh, many, many possibilities, like it's 26 to the power of 100, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you use Hoffman code there, the, expect <coughs> the expected length of a message <coughs> will be the entropy of English. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it's not really important right now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We're just, what? It's interesting. It, it is very interesting. The <coughs> information theory is a fascinating uh, theory. But mm -hmm. anyway, we're going to use very little of, the, of information theory. We're going to use only cross entropy. Mm -hmm. We didn't define cross entropy yet. We just talked about entropy. You it. Pardon? It's written just over. Ah, yeah, yeah. We defined it, but I wanted to give you an intuition. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the intuition for entropy that you have now? This one, this, what's the intuition for this? Uh, it's like the number, <coughs> the number of bits in Hoffman codes. Mm -hmm, yeah. And the expected number of questions you need to ask me in order to find <coughs> a number that I pick according to a known probability of P1. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one, this cross entropy, I won't prove it to you. I will just say to you, suppose that you think that I'm picking a number according to probability P2, uh -huh. but actually I'm picking it according to P1. <coughs> so mm -hmm. you will uh, choose a code according to P2, mm -hmm. but I will, will uh, choose a, a number according to P1. That will be the, you, you will not do as good. It's best to know yeah. the probability. So this will be a bigger number than the probability. That's why this is always bigger or equal to this. And DKL in this sense is the redundancy The when, right, let's write it down. DKL of, P1 and P2 is your inefficient way of encoding a P2 according to P1.
minus the optimal way of doing it. You understand what I'm doing? Uh, sorry, Let, let's write it like that. Um, this is P1. So DKL is actually what you, your redundancy, you, can you see it? Uh, I don't you, understand. This is HP1 of P1 minus H P1. This is uh, the two. Where does the two appear on the right? Here? Where does P2 appear on the right? No, it doesn't. It look, it, it has no, it's here. On the left, there is a P2. Ah, ah yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, that's uh, a, a, an error of my mistake. Yeah, that's it. This is P2. Yeah, sorry, sorry, my mistake. Okay. This is P2. So, do you see the redundancy? Like, this is mm -hmm. your inefficient way of encoding. This is the most efficient way. And uh, the difference is the, your extra encoding. Yeah. All this is not essential. I mean, somebody could come up with another matrix or I don't like to call uh, it. Uh, well, you're right. There are many metrics. Uh, it's not a metric actually. There are many yeah, loss functions, functions, but these turn out to be very uh, good ones. This is practically. practically yeah. Proved Just, good, good. But it's not such a big surprise that uh, something from information theory will do good. Yes. Okay. I think that's a good place to stop. Okay. Okay. I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Thank you very, very much. We'll continue next time. Thank you. And we'll see you. Bye. Bye. All the best.